Are you looking for a project to do? This is definitely one to consider. This is really inexpensive and it's a lot of fun. You can be super creative with it. And what a result though. Like seriously, this is the second time I've done anything like this. The first was the tankard. This has come out just so well. And it's really not that hard to do. I reckon all up, this has probably cost me about $50. Um, I reckon there are people out there that could do it for less than that. And you can just be as creative as you like with it. I decided to do a Rohan type uh, motif from the Lord of the Rings. It's 22 years since the Fellowship of the Ring came out. And it's only recently just been Peter Jackson's birthday. So I kind of thought, yeah, you know what, why not? I grew up around horses and horses are a big part of my life. So I was just kind of thrilled to do it that way. Yeah, you know, if you're into live action role play or the Society of Creative Anachronism or medieval reenactment, perhaps you're just an enthusiast, this is definitely something worth considering. If you want to make it perhaps as a gift for your partner or something like that, definitely worth giving it some thought. I for sure would, um, would give it some thought, hey. Let's take a look at how to make one. Right, so with the drinking horn, this one's actually in really good condition. Um, it's probably been cleaned up before. I don't know because I didn't get it direct from a supplier. I actually got this from a, uh, someone I know in reenactment. So the first thing I'm gonna do pretty much with any horn is I'm gonna give it a wash in just warm water. And the idea here is just to remove any of the dirt and the debris and the other stuff that might be growing on the outside or the inside. So obviously this is a biological kind of thing and you have absolutely no idea what could be going on, especially on the inside. So it's important to give it a good clean just to remove any of that kind of unwanted stuff. Um, as you can see there, some yeah, it's a fair bit of dirt coming out of that as it is. All right, so I'm gonna leave that to dry on my sink and then we'll get into the next part. We're gonna put our horn just over here. Now what I'm gonna do, we've cleaned the inside of it. Now what we're gonna do is just use some vodka to clean the inside. It's just gonna remove any of the last kind of elements of bacteria which might be going on. And I'm going to leave that now for about a week um, or thereabouts. And obviously it's quite warm here at the moment in, uh, in Brisbane, Australia. So I'm going to uh, just top that up as I need to. All right, so we're on day four, pretty quiet here today. And uh, it's been a little bit of evaporation there over the last couple of days, quite warm here in Australia. So we'll just top that up. There we go. Alrighty. Alright, it's actually been a few weeks. I've only planned on a week, but it's been a few weeks. And we're just going to um, just empty this out now. It's a bit, a bit uh, time to get that emptied. And just give that a bit of a rinse. So all the vodka is just going down the sink. Alrighty, so I really like this. This is a really nice piece. There's a couple of things we're gonna do. Now, I just wanna just figure out getting the image on there. So, I'm gonna decide to border that with, now I'm just using a whiteboard marker this time, so that'll be a lot easier to manage, I think, than a Sharpie. Although, I don't know how well it's gonna go. The medieval group that I'm in is a lower class, kind of peasant type group. Um, and I really like the idea of uh, the connections between kind of 12th, 13th century English peasants and some of the themes that are brought out in Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. It's 22 years ago, coincidentally, when Tolkien brought out Lord of the Rings. And so I was like, wow, we could kind of incorporate some of those sort of concepts and being a massive lover of horses and having grown up around horses, I really wanted to kind of incorporate some of those kind of notions. So 
with that, that's what we're going to try and sort of incorporate some of. So I'm hand drawing this, we're going to carve this with a Dremel, a little bit like I did with the tankard. And we'll see how that goes. I'm not like, I don't think these things have to be in perfect symmetry. Um, I don't know what you guys think, I'd, I'd be interested to hear what, what you do think. Um, interestingly, like, the symmetry it's so easy to achieve these days with laser cutters and this kind of thing. Um, so handcrafting is, it's a, it's a much sort of less appreciated thing in some respects. And I've even seen sales of genuine historical artifacts at auction and people have been really upset about the actual item because um, the symmetry is not perfect. And it's like, well, kind of, no, it doesn't, you know, it didn't always need to be. So, I really love the Halls of Rohan. And that's kind of what I'm trying to incorporate some of in these kind of motifs. Um, so you guys, leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. Let's see, how well does this, yeah, there you go, not too, um, not too hard. Like if I decide to change my mind or it's really easy to rub something out. Right, so there we go. So we've done the um, one of the logos of Rohan on there, as well as some kind of Celtic um, weaves and wraps. So that'll be quite interesting to see how that comes through. I'm gonna put that over a, um, I'll do the carving with a Dremel in the morning. This is a bit later in the afternoon over here at the moment. So um, this is a very simple project in terms of actual work and stuff. You're only really looking at about a day and about a week to 10 days for the vodka to do the curing. All right, let's see how this turns out. When you're working on a horn like this, the particles absolutely stink. And there's just nothing you can do to get around it. I have to sand all this back with obviously an orbital sander. So, eye protection to keep the grit out of your eyes, hearing protection, and a mask. Right, so everything is now carved. I'm really, really, really happy with that. It's come out really well and I'm really excited. There's a little bit of sanding we're going to do now, and then we'll get it painted. The weather's been uh, very, very wet the last few days, and I haven't been able to get outside to do any of the long form content. So let's uh, just take advantage of the weather. You'll notice, if you ever do one of these, that the dust from the horn that will clog up the sandpaper. So you'll have to change out whatever sanding mechanism you're using quite regularly. And again, just be very mindful of the dust as it's really bad for you. So we're going to start off with the red and I'm thinking I'm going to end up doing a few coats. I'm using a water-based paint by the company Tamiya for anyone who's interested. Uh, now on an amazing warm day like we have here in Brisbane today, I think I'll be able to get all of the painting done Paint should dry nicely fairly quickly. No big dramas. All right, so we've got this really lovely pattern going here. 
So for those of you who are interested, this is coming out of the halls of Rohan. I really like it. And I'm just going to put some yellow over the top. Um, second coat will bring this out a lot. But for right now, let's see how this goes. Alright, this is really starting to look pretty cool. Now we're going to infill with white on the horse of Rohan. Never looks amazing, unfortunately, with the first coat of white. I don't get these paints out anything like as much as I could. Alright, so second coat's done. I'm really, really, really happy with that. That's come out really well. Um, so let's see how this comes out. So the, I'll polish this afterwards. That'll really make some contrast with the paints. But uh, for now, I'm really ecstatic. So let's, I'm um, going to leave that for a couple of hours and we'll come back. Right, so from the hobby shop, I got this clear lacquer, which I use on top of um, those paints. And this just gives like a bit of extra protection. Uh, it's not a Tamiya brand one, but compatible with Tamiya, so that's great. Righto, the painting's now finished. I just want to bring this up slightly. What I'm going to use for this step is just linseed oil. Do need to be a bit careful with this because it can self-combust. So, just to the point there to worth noting. But basically for this kind of application, absolutely perfect. All right, so just rub it in fairly liberally, fairly generously. And you just do that all over the project. And for the last part, we're just going to polish this up. I got this attachment for my drill from a craft store. It cost me like literally $2.50. I cure the inside of all the horns that I work on with beeswax. So once we've cleaned it with vodka, we cure it with beeswax. Beeswax just helps to seal it and to um, provide any bit of a longer lasting protection, I guess, from the likes of bacteria and microbes. Um, I use a double boiler method. This is quite simply a whole lot safer than um, trying to heat it directly which can cause uh, flash burns and stuff. Alrighty, so um, I just use a soup can uh, inside one of my saucepans. If you, um, if you use it direct, like try and heat the beeswax directly in the saucepan, um, it's gonna leave like a residue, which is basically impossible to get rid of. So I just find the, the um, double boiler method the easiest way to go for me. Alrighty, so this is nicely Heat it up. I'm using a gloved hand just to protect myself from the heat. And you just repeat that process kind of A few times just being wary of course that as the beeswax cools it's going to go a bit lumpy so you need to be you don't want to be taking your time and we're done like how awesome does this look this is really cool and this is just like I'm so proud of this, I'm so stoked. This is really cool, I'm just really happy with it. It's come out so well, this is a really easy make. You can pick up horns like this for 20 bucks, 30 bucks, sometimes a little bit more, off places like Gumtree, uh, from your local car craft store. Some of the artisans will also sell them. Renaissance fairs, you can buy them there. Um, Facebook Marketplace, all of those kind of places all sell this kind of thing and it's just so good. It's very easy to work something like this. The only real tool that I've used in this one 
is the drill and obviously the Dremel as well. Yeah, but you can achieve something like this just with very simple tools. This is really good. I'm just so stoked. Alrighty guys, well I really hope you enjoyed today's video. So much more content coming out soon. Really excited. This is, yeah, this is really good. Alright, um, thank you so much for watching. I really enjoy catching up with you again. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.